very special date. It was Yutet Kislev, which is the day the Alter Rebbe, the one who wrote the Tanya, right? His picture is on here. This is the Alter Rebbe was freed from jail. And even if he was put in jail because of people who accused him, you know, for supporting or for going against the Russian Tsar, um, it was really a spiritual reason why he was in jail, is because he was spreading too much chasidut. He was giving too many secrets of God, of Torah. So the angels, you know, were, were upset, and because of that he was put in jail, so he should stop um, spreading chasidus. When he was let out of that jail, that was a deadly jail that no one ever comes out of. Okay, this was the, the most harshest jail he was put. When you go against, when you rebel against the government, um, you're put in the worst jails and usually it's for execution. They, they, they kill people. Miraculously, he was let out. And because of that, he got the answer that in Shemayim, in the sky, the, the, the court case won that he's allowed to spread these secrets of Hasidus that he should continue, and right after that he wrote the Tanya, he wrote 53 chapters of Tanya, hi Dorit, 53 chapters of Tanya, symbolizing the 53 days he spent in jail. So we're up to chapter 46, and um, we don't have so many chapters, but the last few chapters are long, and and I, I don't know if hard is the word, but very deep, very deep chapters, okay? Um, do you need do you need something a pen or no, you have everything okay? So I decided to review the emotion of love. Okay, so we we learned about fear. Okay, he went the Alter Rebbe explained us how fear is the first emotion we should um, experience before in a relationship before loving a person. You first have to be able to be com- completely humble and understand what does the other person want before feeling love. Okay, I'm not going to go into fear, I'm going to go into love. So there's different levels of love. And every chapter, since chapter 44, 45, 46, 47, he goes and he brings us a closer, a more attainable love that everyone is able to attain. It is so important, the Alter Rebbe stresses it's so important to feel love for Hashem that he'll give us so many different levels and so many different ways of, of loving Hashem because love is that connection that keeps us it's that life source it is essential to our existence as jewish people to be connected to hashem and to love hashem is is very very important and that's why the altar rabbi goes into details and goes into different levels and different ways you can love hashem the first level what is the first level the altar rabbi talks about the first level is the highest level it's usually tzaddikim that experience this love this love is when one person is um, reach the level of fear, the highest level of fear, where he's completely um, empty. He's an empty vessel. He's completely, uh, how do you say, subdued? Comment dit sumi? How do we say that in English? Surrendered. Surrendered. Completely surrendered. Completely humbled before God. It's the highest level of fear, and as a gift. God gives him this gift of a love of pleasures, a very high love that only tzaddikim experience. And this one comes from above. This comes after really hard work of working on yourself to remove that ego, to remove those the klipa within you. The second level of love, and this is an interesting love, this is something we can all do, but it's it also demands work. It doesn't just come. You also have to work for it. It's called avat olam. We, I'm reviewing all the loves. Now, right now, I'm reviewing all the loves so that we can understand what chapter 46 talks about. Avat olam is a love of the world. That means you look at the world, you experience different emotion, different things you're attracted to, and instead of being connected to that part of the world, you try to find godliness. You try to separate content from emotion and find the godliness within that world for example you're attracted to i don't know you like you 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 like exactly you like food (laughs) instead of of just eating it just to to um um how do you call it to calm your nourish no nourish is good to but just for your pleasures you you elevate it you you say a bracha 
you use that energy that the, the food gave you to um, to do a good deed. So you're elevating avatolam through the world, through different things in the world, through different experiences in the world. You find love towards God and you find godliness. Okay, so this comes also through hard work, right? You have to. You can't just. You have to meditate, you have to think about it, you have to be conscious every time you do an action, you have to be very aware of what you do, you have to think deeply and try to elevate and try to find godliness in in um, your experience. Then, I think this is a very interesting one that uh, it was new for me. There's a different love, there's an instinctive love that we all have. The Alter Rebbe goes, in, okay, those two are hard to achieve, but I, but the Alter Rebbe told us that it's very close to us. So he's going to bring us ways that it's very close to us. He tells us there's a love that's called Nafshi Ivisicha Balayla. My soul yearns for you at night. Every time, you know, when you like, you know those people who joke about having an emo, uh, a relationship with their bed? <laughs> like they're like oh my god i'm so excited it's always a joke right? yeah. when i mean they they it's it's a joke they want to be in bed you know that your body's craving to be in bed you know that feeling yeah. that because really is a craving of your soul wanting to reconnect with its source every time you feel tired it's really your soul that oh my god i need to reconnect to my source to hashem it's a love that's instinctive that is within us Mm-hmm. And if we're able to tap into it, certain Sadiqim would wake up at night just to connect. You know when we there's right. that special moment in the, in the middle of the night uh, where people wake up and they read certain passages of the Torah as they yeah. learn? It's because there's a certain feeling when your soul wants to connect with your source, you're able to elevate it. So just wanting, just the fact that you want to go to sleep... That your soul, it's really a, a yearning from your soul. Can you imagine? It's a physical thing for us, because but it's really a spiritual yearning of your soul wanting to connect. Because what happens when you go to sleep? Your neshama, a part of your neshama goes mm-hmm. and, and reconnects. Yeah, that's why you felt, feel energized. And that's why in the morning we say, You returned my soul to me. So it's kind of a, 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 it says it's a, I don't know how much percentage of death it is, but it's kind of your soul leaving a little bit, a little part to um, re-energize itself with the source. So that's a love that's instinctive. That's all everyone has. You can't say you, you don't have it. There's another love. Sterna. Yes. It's, yeah, sorry. Um, where does, because it's, it's funny that, the, I mean, it's, it's not funny because, I mean, like, I, obviously it was, it's, we've spoken about before. Um, on, um, on Friday, I was sitting with my sister-in-law. Yeah. And, um, and I mentioned that. I mentioned, I was saying how, uh, like, we were talking about being tired and whatever, and I was mentioning, oh, you know, in my family class. Anyways, she, then she, she asked me where... Where exactly it's written? So it's in chapter. In, it's in chapter forty-four. Does okay, she learn exactly. Tanya? I was telling her that it was. No, but uh, but I was telling her anyways. I'm trying to but, not convince her, but just telling her how she should. But the ch- the chapter in Tanya takes it from a different place. I'm not sure from where. What's the source of it? Okay. But yeah. Was she so okay. she thought it was interesting? Chap- well, it, no, she said, she said it was very interesting that she haven't heard that before. And I said, well, then you should join my Tanya class. Yeah. And she said she'll try. Well, she's a flight attendant, so she's not always like here. Right. But um, anyways, okay, thank you. I just want to, yeah. and you said, it, and then we're in chapter 44, right? No, right. right now we're in chapter 46, actually. But oh. I think, I think it was, cha- no, I, I what, could. I, I think it was in chapter 44. I'm going to confirm with you. When I find it, I'm going to yeah. confirm with you so you can see it. Okay, exactly. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so that's an instinctive love. That love is like your body needs it. You know, you need to, like someone who doesn't sleep, it's really dangerous for him. Your body needs to reconnect. So that's also a kind of love. But uh, then the, the, uh, the Alter Rebbe goes on to say there's another love. A love that comes, that we inherited from Moshe Rabbeinu. You know when it says that, like all the people in the Torah, they gave us a gift. Mm-hmm. Moshe, what's the gift he gave us? He gave us this love like a father to a son, or like a son to a father. The love of a son to a father is a love that's really great, where the son doesn't even think about himself. He gives up everything just to serve his father. 
That love is hidden. This is inherit. This you don't have to work for. You you inherit it. You inherited Moshe. It's Moshe Rabbeinu's gift. He gave it to all the Jewish people, and you just have to remove that mud and and reconnect. It's inside. It's inside of you. It's a love that is like a son to a father. But again, the Alter Rebbe says even that love seems very far. Yes, I'm recording it. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the recording. Even that love might be hard for some people because you have to. It's hidden deep within, within, and it's usually awakened when um, a Jew is challenged uh, and has to give up his life for Judaism. It's awakened. I think that love was awakened. Once. Yeah, Mesirat Nefesh, Mesirat Nefesh. So it's it's hidden within. It's deep, deep, deep hidden within. It's hard to access, and it's awakened when a Jew is challenged in front of either giving up his religion, giving up God or giving up his life. Yeah. And that love for God is so great that he will give up his life just for yeah. God. The Alter Rebbe said, fine, if you think this is hard, right? It's hard to, to reach that love. There's another love. And this love also for me is new. I think it's beautiful. It's the love from Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu, when he saw Rachel, he kissed her and he he awakened, he gave the, the Mida of Tiferet, of Rachamim, which is mercy, to all, because Rachel is one of our mothers. Mm -hmm. So he gave that capability of all the souls that she was holding, the capability of having empathy or compassion. Is that the same word? I, I always wonder, no. is compassion no. and empathy the same word? No, really not. So no. I, don't, I don't know what to use. Rachamim, I think, is empathy. Moi, j'aurais dit compassion, but okay. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Compassion is when you really care for someone else and you feel the sadness. They and what's empathy? And empathy, c'est un sentiment qui est plus like I think you're empathic. Like you feel the energy. Of okay. Energy. So no. So it's compassion. You're right. Okay. Fine. I needed that clarification. So it's compassion. He 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 gave us the capability to have compassion. It, all the Jewish souls to have compassion. Yeah. Why is it important? Because sometimes you cannot feel love. And when you can't feel love, when you can't connect to that love, then have compassion. Have compassion for that soul that's inside of you, that's godly, that's so high, that's only used to spiritual and holiness, and is brought down to this world, to mud, to places, everywhere you go. What, just know that whatever you do, whatever places you go, whether it's in good places or bad places, whatever action, whatever emotions you feel, that soul is dragged there even if it doesn't want to go. So have compassion, right? Compassion for that soul. Feel bad for that soul. By having compassion for that soul, you will be able to love that soul. You mean your own soul? Or I your, own soul. Ah, your own soul. But it's also a lesson for us that when we're in, when we're surrounded by people, by family, by ourselves, sometimes we don't love parts of ourselves. Sometimes we don't, you know. Mm -hmm. If you can't find love, love is important. We are a, a, a nation of love. We have to love. Right, the whole basis of the Torah we is to hate, love. We can hate also. Yes, we but we have to love. Also, yeah. We can hate too. That's easy. That comes easy. <laughs> but love is very hard. Especially certain people are even higher, harder to love. But we must love. Love is very important. Love is what keeps us connected. We're all part of one body and soul. So what do we do when we can't love a person? When we can't find nowhere, we can't <laughs> dig that love. We feel bad for that person. We feel compassion mm -hmm. we feel bad wow look i feel so bad for that person and that compassion is also a kind of love that will be able to connect you so when you you can't feel that love for hashem you can dig deep and connect to that love of a son and a father or that love that's instinctive you can't connect to it then have compassion for your godly soul for hashem who's stuck inside of you and is brought and dragged along everywhere the altar Rebbe continues and says Fine, I have an even closer love, and this is chapter 46. I have a love that even is even closer and more attainable than any of any other loves. What is this love? Kamayim hapanim lapanim. It's a love like a face reflected in the water. Mm. You reflect the same face. If someone loves you, Protection. you will feel that love. You will pr automatically, when you're attracted or you love someone, why is it? It's usually because that person loves you. And even more so if that person chose love. Hmm? 
Des fois inconsciemment. Aussi. Exactly. Ouais. You don't know why mm-hmm. you love a certain person. It's because that person loves loves you. So it's like a mirror. It's always, usually always works. And especially if that person shows that they love you, then you're going to mirror it back. That is the love that every single Jew experiences, whether you feel it or not. God took the Jewish people out of Egypt where they were the lowest of the lowest, like that princess, right? Or that, that, that peasant that he found in the dumps and took her, the king took her. And, and, and brought her in his chariot and brought her to the palace and cleaned her up and made her all beautiful and then he married her. That is what we experience as a Jewish nation. We were in the lowest dumps in Egypt and we were brought to the highest of the highest. That love, we cannot go away from. It's a mir- it should mirror. It, it, it's, a, a, it's a love that should mirror just like God loves us for no reason. He chose us for no reason. We were in the dumps. We were in the lowest. That love is mirrored every day. And that love is attainable by everyone. Now the Alter Rebbe goes on and says that every time we do a mitzvah, it's, lo- it's like we embrace, or God embraces us. The mitzvah is chesed, is the right arm of God, gvura, the left arm, and tiferes is the body, is a hug. Every time you do a mitzvah, you get a hug from Hashem. It's like you're hugging Hashem. And every time you say words of Torah with your breath, right? You use your breath to say the words of Torah. The words of Torah are God's innermost uh, intelligent, uh, chachma, right? It comes from his, you know, you say the words, it's like kisses. So... It, it, yes, it's hard to, but this is what the Tanya said. Kiss mouth to mouth. Yeah. And, um. At least I had a hard time to. And the Alter Rebbe then asks a very interesting question. Okay, so we know, so we understand that our love is mirrored. Whether we like it or not, it's mirrored because Hashem loves us so much, so automatically our soul mirrors it, it back. How do we connect? How do we express that love? By doing Torah and mitzvot. Every time we do actions, good deeds, or we say words, we, we, are, we are hugging and kissing Hashem, literally. Mm-hmm. Now the, the Alter Rebbe goes on to say, what happens when someone doesn't do or profanes? And he brings two mitzvot. He brings Shabbat and Pesach. Which I think is interesting. I don't know why he brings those two. He says, what if someone doesn't feel those hugs and kisses and doesn't feel that connection to God, right? Why would they be punished the same way as a holy person who does feel, who does know what he's doing every time he breaks Shabbat or every time he eats bread on Pesach? Right? Why should someone who's a tzaddik Mm -hmm. and someone who's a rasha, okay? Mm -hmm. So someone who's holy, who understands holiness, or even if he doesn't feel it, but he understands a certain level um, what what's happening every time he does an action or every time he breaks or profanes Shabbat, he understands it. He's punished the same way that someone who does not feel, who does not understand, who's completely ignorant, is punished. The punishment is equal. Why is that fear? Do you understand the question? Mm-hmm. Right. If if a person, you know, if there's if a person is aware, I, I want to try to give an example. Like, if a child does, uh, uh, you know, so he messes up the house, or he does, he's not aware of what he's doing. You don't punish a child the same way that you'll punish uh, an, a teenager who mm-hmm. who messes up the house or does right, because it's all about awareness. So too, why is someone, a Jewish person, who is completely ignorant, who doesn't understand what is a mitzvah and what is what is the severity of breaking that uh, that mitzvah, uh, to a someone who's holy who breaks it, will have the same punishment? Why? The Alter Rebbe said because what happens to the tzaddik and to the to the person who's ignorant is the same thing. When you do a mitzvah, you're the same connection Hashem has to the tzaddik he is having with you. So when you break it, you, you should be equal. You should be equally punished. You disconnect, right? you disconnect exactly. Shabbat, 
what happens to a tzaddik and what happens to you is the same thing. You just don't feel it. But the tzaddik feels it, but you don't feel it. But it's ha- the same ha- spiritual feeling um, that happens on Shabbat to a tzaddik is happening to any regular person. Every single Jew experiences the same thing on Shabbat. The difference is tzaddikim actually feel it or are aware of it. And people who are not, are not aware of it. But the same thing's happening. What so is that's... <laughs> Is, is that you're disconnected. It's like lit curry, so you're, comp- you're, wow. you're really disconnected. The point is, what I think why he brought this is to tell us that there's no differentiation between a tzaddik, a rasha, a benoni. We all experience the same thing when we do a mitzvah. Hashem's connection to a Jew is the same, whether you're a tzaddik, a benoni, or a rasha. It's the same thing. The difference is, People who are not tzaddikim are covered with mud, are covered with the klipa, and cannot experience that feeling. Cannot experience that or understand spirituality. Do you know this? the famous story of um, in um, c- communist Russia? There was a teacher who um, wanted to, t- you know, who followed Marxism and wanted to teach her students a lesson. So she said, do you guys see the sky? And the kids said, yes, we do. Do you guys see that tree outside? And they said, yes. Do you see the building over there? And the children said, yes. And then she says, do you see God? And the children said, no. So she said, so it doesn't exist. And there was a Jewish kid who got up and he said, um, guy, um, students, do you see uh, the teacher's nose? Why? Oh, because she has a nose. Do you see the teacher's hair? Yes, because she has hair. Do you see the teacher's hand? Then, she, then the student said, do you see the teacher's brain? And the, de- the kid says, no, she's like, because she doesn't have any. <laughs> the point is, if you don't see something, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. If you did don't... You, did you touch base on this at Hebrew school with the kids? Because you ju- I just had a flash. Mm-hmm. You, you touch base about... About what? Uh, if you see God, uh, you, you're gonna... It's possible. I, the teachers... Lisa came to me yesterday. We were, like, just talking. And, and she came and she said, no, ça c'est impossible. Impossible. And she said, no, mama, the only thing that is impossible is that God doesn't exist. Je lui ai jamais parlé de ça. Maybe. Ever. I don't know if they spoke. Maybe the teachers brought it up. Okay, I mean, we're... we're okay, but so the point is, it doesn't mean you don't feel it, you don't see it, you don't it understand it, that it doesn't exist. It's and it's happening the same thing every time you do a mitzvah. Every time you do a mitzvah, you're literally being hugged and kissed when you say the, the words of the Torah by God. Even if you don't feel it. But you have to your do neshama, it without interest, right? Because if you do it to feel closer to God and hug them. I don't think that's wrong. Yeah? I don't think that's wrong. But we have to know what is happening every time we do a mitzvah, even if we don't feel it. And by knowing that when we break it, when we break Shabbat, we are, we're, we're disconnecting, we're doing the opposite of it, is huge. We don't feel it, but it's still happening. Mm-hmm. That's why the punishment is equal for someone who's a tzaddik, a benoni, or a rasha, because the same thing, Hashem treats us equally. Just tzaddikim are luckier. For them to, for them to do a mitzvah, they have to be, uh, nevera, they have to be really, really bad. I mean, I don't know if that's possible. But but for someone who feels it, who understands, who sees it, it's impossible to, to go against God, right? We have that choice. By not control. feeling it, we kind of have the choice. That gives us the choice. But we have to know what we're doing, what our actions are doing, whether we, we see it or not. Just like the brain. We don't see it, we know it's there. What did you say? No, we are equal souls, right? For, for no. God. no uh, yeah, we're all equal. No, but I, I, I uh, but I, I can't souls. say we're all equal souls. There's souls that are greater than it's like the. But Hashem treats, but Hashem treats the soul of a tzaddik and the soul of a regular person the same so, way. So that's why I'm telling Hashem you, are will we treat. Equal souls? Well, it depends what way you're no. looking. If in the eyes of Hashem we're all equal, but I would, I as a person, I wouldn't equal myself to the Rebbe. You know, uh, uh, I would never. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like. But on God's eye, I'm sure. Yes. We are. Just that some of them experience more closeness to Hashem. Than Godliness and our higher source, exactly. Yeah. It's different missions also. Like the, I, I, I don't know. This is my own, um, my yeah. own interpretation. I feel like, in a way, the world was created for souls like us because we have the choice 
to we don't feel it if you if we felt it it's kind of like you're forced to to do something no does it make sense what i'm saying i don't know if i don't know if we had choice like we've been born with we have a choice because we don't see it you don't see what you're doing you don't feel your godliness being hugged and kissed by hashem no i I don't sometimes Sometimes, but you love like a huge hug to her i'm like wow it's it's godly almost because like yeah, but I'm talking about when you do a mitzvah. I'm talking mitzvah. about the real practical Giving thing. Giving love is doing a mitzvah, I'm sure. It is, it, it is for sure. But uh, uh, do you feel godliness when you uh, when you kiss when a mezuzah? Kosher, or, or, when I eat kosher, uh, for or, me it's normal. Tu vois, je, genre, c'est ça que j'essaie de comprendre. Des fois, for me, what gives me, what brings me closer to God is when I go out of my comfort zone toward God. Let's say a mitzvah, I'm not just if I'm gonna get married, keeping Nida for me is gonna be that's huge. So, huge. so yeah, I would have that. So, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. When you go out of your comfort but zone, so. that means your comfort you zone is choice. to do things that are very, in a way, beastly, right? Running after your desires, running after the things you like, developing yourself. The Torah is the opposite. You have to go out of your comfort zone, you have to do things that don't make sense, that are not attractive, okay? Torah is not attractive. It's not, but it's real. <laughs> it's okay. I don't think it's bad, but it's real. It's real. It's real. It's deep. It's it what stays. Up, it, it can be compelling, I think, when you when you approach it in an angle of. Moi, c'est la contrainte qui me bloque encore. Tu vois, c'est de me sentir contrainte de faire quelque Mais chose. when you understand that the contrainte is like not to that. stop you from doing things, it's in order to make your soul express itself in a and. Still, you. you on t'enlève le libre arbitre justement de faire ou de ne pas faire c'est un peu ça la lutte mais no I find the fact that we don't feel we that that's what gives us freedom of choice I think that you don't feel what we don't feel what we're doing if you felt every action you did so you're every, doing it on automatic mode right? not automatic but by like being conscious, conscious. Yeah, you have to be conscious but you have the choice okay when I'm doing this mitzvah what? I'm connecting to Hashem even if I don't feel it you know okay. and and it says that the lower you are the greater that love is why because you're so low and this greatest being above being godly thing wants to connect with you the love should be even greater this love of the reflection it says the lower the person is the greater the love is usually you connect to god in this moment dark places like because that's la seul échappatoire on va dire mm-hmm. J'ai remarqué que les gens qui deviennent religieux, c'est après une grosse épreuve. Yes. La perte d'un être cher. Mm-hmm. Ou euh, ouais. And we have to know so that God initiates all the time. God is initiating his love. First of all, he initiated since um, Egypt. He even goes on to say, the Alter Rebbe says, but for someone who says Egypt was so long ago, it was, ouais. how do I connect to it? We have to know that every single day there's a pasuk that says, "Bechol dovador chayav adam lirot et asmoi ki ilu hu yatsa mimitzchayim." Every generation, a person must believe that he's leaving Egypt, as if he's leaving Egypt. What does that mean? Our soul is in Egypt. Our godly soul in our body is in Egypt. It does not want to be there. You, everything you do, that is against. Uh, Torah mitzvot, or that's not uh, holy, it it is giving it more of an exile. So every time you do a mitzvah, every time you learn Torah, every time you say bracha on food, every time you come and learn Tanya, you're giving that freedom to your soul. So you can feel constraint from yeah. Torah mitzvot, but that's your animal. But your godly soul yeah. feels freedom. It's not likes it. It feel, it's freedom to the animal soul. Every time you do Torah and mitzvot, you're liberating your godly soul. And that's how you can experience um, Mitzrayim, leaving Egypt in every generation, is by realizing that your godly soul is in exile. And the way you can redeem it is by doing Torah and mitzvot. I don't know. I think this is very powerful. It says, there's a passage that says, let me find it. Mm-hmm. 
It says that Vani ba'er v'lo eda ba'mot ha'yiti mach v'ani tamid mach. And I am foolish and and know and feel not. I was as a beast before you, and I'm continually with you. So that is to tell us that even if we have a beast, okay, we're compared to beast in front of Hashem because. We're co- constantly instinctive after, you know, we're c- constantly after our instincts. and um, But even in our low state, we can still be with Hashem. We shouldn't remove that. That's kind of like the struggle of the Benoni, right? That feels that evil within him. And he doesn't know how to connect to Hashem. But at, over here he tells us, even if you have that beast, that beast, even how, however low you may be, you can still be connected to Hashem. So don't ever underestimate, don't ever say, you know, I'm in such a low place, I can't do Torah and Mitzvah, it's not for me, my mind is not there, I'm, if you knew what I did, if you know what I, no. The, this is great. the greatest love, that small action that you can do to your soul, redeem it, can be a crazy amount of love that you would feel towards Hashem. Yeah, this is the chapter 46, and it's going to go on in chapter 47 and 48 to explain that love, that love that is, um, how do you call it, reciprocal love? Reciprocal? Reciproque. And um, reciprocal. Reciprocal, yeah. Where, Where, again, if you love someone then that person will love you back. I think it's you, Joso, to know, to always make sure to be genuine in your love and to, even if you show, and and how much more so if you show that person, normally the, it should mirror back. So I think that's also a huge lesson for relationships. Mm-hmm. Can't wait for someone to love you. You have to love first. You have to give. So this is chapter 46.